dear sweet mother of God, we're in Eastern Europe. Welcome to Slovakia, a country known for its stunning mountains, cute cities, ungodly amounts of castles, and being constantly mistaken for Slovenia. It is located in Eastern Europe. Mm, what do you mean Eastern Europe? We are Central Europe, not Eastern. Is this how an Eastern European looks? I don't think so. It is located in Central Europe and is bordered by five other countries. To its east there is Ukraine, to its north Poland and Czechia, to its west and right across its capital Austria and to its south the greatest country that has graced the earth, Hungary. It has a population of 5.4 million people and has been quite stable since the country peacefully split off from Czechoslovakia. Its capital and largest city is Bratislava which has roughly 440,000 citizens. The second largest city is Košice, located virtually on the opposite side of the country, with 238,000 inhabitants. And the third is Brešov, found nearby, which has around 88,000. When it comes to the history of Slovakia, the story of this country begins in... Hoho! Me and Turtina lem! Hoho! Slovakia on och nincs Turtina lem! Mar pedig! Oluvorsog nem lietezik! Urulu miru pesils! O filvidek! <laughs> but whether we travel back to the past or the web, the only way to stay safe is by using Atlas VPN, baby! Since Atlas is founding in 2019, they have been the best VPN on the market. No matter from where or what absolute filth on the internet you're browsing, Atlas is there to protect you as there is no better VPN for the job. And what's that? Hey mom, did you know that Atlas VPN is now running a huge summer sale where now Atlas only costs $183 a month and with that you also get to browse the net completely free for another 3 months. Hell yeah! You bet I'm getting that for my whole family. Atlas also prevents ads and malware from harming your computer. Companies also love to charge you more online just because you're accessing their site from a richer country. But with Atlas VPN, that is no more. On top of that, you can also access different TV shows and movies geolocked from your home country. Bazinga! And the best part is, it's on unlimited devices. So with one subscription you can have your entire household covered. So go and click the link in the description and get Atlas Premium for just 183 a month plus 3 months for free. And if you dislike the service, no problem, you have a 30 day money back guarantee. So go check it out, by supporting Atlas you support me. Again go to atlasv.pn slash europe and protect yourself. As I was saying, the history of Slovakia, much like the rest of Europe, dates back to the Stone Age. However, it didn't start to get interesting up until the Iron Age when around 500 BCE it was settled by the Celts. During the ancient days the territory of modern day Slovakia was influenced by a variety of ancient people such as the Dacians and even Thracians. Hell, even the Romans had a small presence in the south of the country where they built fortifications below the Danube. After the fall of the Romans in the 4th century AD, Slovakia became overwhelmed by barbaric invasions led mainly by the Huns and Avars. This carnage opened up the path for new Slavic settlers to settle the area in the 7th century, where they formed the Samo Empire after ceding from the Avars. In the 8th century the Principality of Nitra was formed, and later on with the neighboring territory of Moravia, the two formed the Great Moravian Empire in the 9th century. The Great Moravian Empire didn't last, as throughout the 10th century it suffered continually more raids from the Hungarians who settled within the Carpathian Basin a century earlier. Kurva Slovakok, Nesorokos Moderokol. 
this weakened the empire so much so that it collapsed in the 11th century and was subsequently annexed by the Kingdom of Hungary. In the 13th century the region, much like the rest of Hungary, was devastated by the Mongols. Hundreds of thousands of people were killed and driven out their homes, which then prompted many Germans and Jews I'll be crying if I look like that too bro, that's fucked up what they be doing to y'all to come and settle the area. It's free real estate. In the 16th century, as the Ottomans expanded more and more into Hungary, the capital of the kingdom was moved from Buda to Bratislava, also known in Hungarian as Pozsony. As Hungary was completely conquered by the mid 16th century, Slovakia came under the control of the Habsburgs, which also led to much of the Hungarian nobility to flee to Slovakian territories, which shifted the demographics more into their favor and made Slovakia a filthy goulash eating nation. <laughs> With the dawn of the Protestant Reformation, a good chunk of Slovakia became spiritually challenged and converted to Lutheranism, which then prompted frequent wars and skirmishes between them and the Catholics, as the Catholic Church went into a complete and utter autistic meltdown. Could you imagine? People interpreting the Bible differently? Oh, the horror! <laughs> On occasion, the Ottomans would join in as well for good measure. During this time, the majority of Slovakia's castles were erected due to these frequent clashes. By the mid 17th century, the Counter Reformation was in full swing in the country as Austria got its way and reverted most of the population back to Catholicism. By the mid 19th century, most of Hungary was reconquered back from the Turks, and Hungary, upon getting back its historical territories, suddenly wished to secede from Austria because that's how you show gratitude. <laughs> This prompted them to revolt against the Habsburgs in 1848. During the Hungarian revolt, the majority of Slovakia supported Austria in the hopes that they would be liberated from Hungary, because you can eat so much paprika in a meal a day. I mean seriously, god f damn. Learn to use another spice. Every meal I have in Hungary is just paprika with something. Use something else for once in your life. And no, sour cream is not a spice. Jesus Christ, no wonder you lost 70% of your territory. Anyways, although the Hungarian Revolution failed, it spawned the dual monarchy, also known as Double Trouble, Austria-Hungary, and Hungary's influence over Slovakia tightened, as the kingdom started many majorization programs. And here we go again with the goddamn paprika! By the end of World War I, Hungary was partitioned and Slovakia became independent, as it formed a new nation of Czechoslovakia alongside Czechia. Although independent, much of the newly formed Czechoslovakia was inhabited by ethnic minorities such as Germans, Hungarians and Ruthenians. By the late 1930s, this gave enough ammunition to Germany to partition the country with Hungary and formalize the first Slovak Republic, which was virtually a German puppet state. During World War II, much of Slovakia's Jewish population perished. Ultimately, the country was liberated by the Red Army in 1945, reinstating Czechoslovakia as a state. Soon after, a communist government was also instituted in 1948. Up until 1989, Czechoslovakia remained a socialist state within the Warsaw Pact. Although, in 1968, the country had an anti-communist revolution, which was promptly and unfortunately stomped out by the USSR and the majority of the Warsaw Pact countries. Except for Romania and Albania. I wonder what was going on with them at that time. With the collapse of the Berlin Wall, communism also collapsed in Czechoslovakia. And soon after its collapse, the two countries that made up the nation also peacefully split up in 1993, in stark contrast to what was going on in Yugoslavia at the time. Since then, Slovakia has been rapidly developing. It joined both NATO and the EU in 2004, overcame its former overlord Hungary by GDP per capita in 2007 and adopted the Euro in 2009. But there is so much you can learn about a country by reading up about it. To truly get to know Slovakia, we must go and visit this magnificent place. 
As someone with little time and even less funds, I was only able to visit Bratislava, so we will be mainly focusing on that city in this video. If you'd like more Slovakia content, make sure to like and share this video. Anyways, Bratislava is located in Western Slovakia and is the only capital in the world that borders two other countries, those being Austria and Hungary. The city is so close to Vienna that it is practically a one hour bus ride away, which makes it a popular day trip destination for basic bitches who think vacationing in Vienna is acceptable human behavior. It's so disgusting. <coughs> who would go to such a place? <coughs> As I mentioned before, Bratislava, much like the rest of Slovakia, has been inhabited since the Stone Age. However, the city itself started gaining importance in the 16th century. As the Hungarian army was defeated at the Battle of Mohács by the encroaching Ottomans, their next target was Bratislava. Although the city suffered tremendously during the siege, the Turks were ultimately unsuccessful at subjugating the city. Thus, with the fall of Buda, the capital of Hungary was moved here. Yet, the city only really started to flourish in the 18th century with the reign of beloved Austrian queen Maria Theresa. Under her rule, Bratislava became the largest and most important city in Hungary. Much of the town saw rapid development as many palaces, churches and mansions sprung up during this period and its population tripled. This is reflected in much of the city center's look as most of the buildings were done in the Baroque style which was popular for the time period. Throughout its history, the city was quite multicultural. Before World War I, both the Germans and Hungarians made up around 40% of the population, while the Slovaks were just 15%. This also explains why during the Hungarian Revolution of 1848, Bratislava supported Hungary, while the rest of Slovakia opposed their secession. By the end of World War I, the majority of the town's population also opposed joining Czechoslovakia because of this. Shortly after, the demographics in the city started to switch and each of the three ethnic groups became roughly one third of the population. Today, around 90% of the city is Slovak, with the Hungarians making somewhere around 2% of the population, and the other percentage being undeclared. But enough about demographics and world wars. Let's talk about the city itself. When first entering Slovakia's city center, you will most likely be met with a bunch of old-timey buildings in winding streets being overlooked by a giant castle situated on top of a hill. Here and there, you'll also find a cute baroque church peeking its head as you watch people going on about their day. As you navigate these Enlightenment era streets and relish the classical Austro-Hungarian facades, passing by a slew of shops, cafes, and definitely not racially charged restaurants, you will find yourself in the heart of Bratislava, its main square. All over the place, you can notice hundreds of people enjoying their time, sipping on a slightly overpriced coffee or beer, and appreciating the magnificent architecture that surrounds the square. Fun fact about the main square, throughout history it boasted a variety of different names. In the 1850s, it was known as Franz Josef Square, in 1914 as Maastricht Square, and during World War II it was known simply as Hitler Square. I am Adolf Hitler. As impressive as most of the buildings on the square are, the old town hall undoubtedly takes the main spotlight. As its soaring clock tower was built in the 14th century, the town hall has earned the reputation of being the oldest city hall in the world. Today, alongside being a meeting place of demonic creatures from the seventh circle of hell, also known as bureaucrats, it also houses the oldest museum in the city, where you can find exhibits about Bratislava and torture devices. And no, I'm not talking about bureaucratic forms. Behind the town hall, you can also find yet another famous city building, the Primate's Palace. Despite its misleading name, the palace is not related to any sort of monkey business. Unless, uh, you count the Habsburgs. The Nigachin! The neoclassical palace astonishes onlookers with its pink and white facade, which has given it the name of the most beautiful building in Bratislava. Originally, the building was built in the 18th century for the city's archbishop. However, in the 19th century, the building became a palace of negotiation during the Napoleonic Wars and had the fourth piece of Pressburg signed here, ending the war of the Third Coalition. Today the building is still involved in political affairs as it serves the seat of the city's mayor. However, it still offers things for the everyday man, as it contains a gallery of Habsburg portraits 
and a collection of tapestries and furniture from their era. Moving on from decadent palaces, we head on deeper into the city's center. As I mentioned before, much of Bratislava's downtown is ordained with restaurants and bars that for the most part pander to tourists and rip them off of their precious bow box. But if you've come here from Vienna, then you 100% uh, deserve it. Anyways, you might be wondering what is it that these tourists are eating? Well, that's simple my dear viewer, a good old chunk of meat on a plate. God bless Slovakia. Slovak food is quite hearty, as most of it comes from the time when self-sufficiency meant everything. Thus, most popular dishes are basically consistent with some sort of chunk of meat, dairy, potato, wheat and sauerkraut. Throughout Slovakia you can find a variety of dumplings usually made with some milk sauce, baked meat like the mighty pork knuckle, again, god bless Slovakia, and some sort of stew followed by a side of sauerkraut. And all of it is astonishingly delicious. But no meal is complete without a minimum of 0.5 liters of beer and a shot of Tatra tea. If you ever get a chance to go to Slovakia, you absolutely have to try Tatra tea. They literally figured out how to make tea alcoholic. 52% mind you, and even above, and make it delicious. God bless Slovakia. And uh, Tatra tea, sponsor me please. And this is where I put it. Tatra tea sponsorship. If I had one! Anyways, within the center you can find yet another site of importance, Michael's Gate. Throughout Bratislava's existence, the city has been surrounded by fortifications, and when you have spastics such as the Ottomans to your south, you kind of have to. Michael's Gate is a remnant to this past, as it used to be one of four city gates that allowed travelers and locals to go past the city's walls. Impressively enough, its first form was built sometime in the 1300s, yet its modern shape took form in the 18th century, thus its baroque look. Of the four gates, Michael's was the smallest and mainly used by fishermen going to the Danube, thus it was also colloquially known as Fisherman's Gate. Moving on, we head to one of Bratislava's most well-known landmarks, the St. Martin's Cathedral. Although maybe not as impressive looking as some other churches in Central Europe, St. Martin's is still an incredibly important monument of culture. Before the church was first built in the 13th century, its grounds used to be the proper center of town. As Bratislava developed, a large church was required. Thus, St. Martin was created. Originally, it was constructed in the Romanesque style, but over the years, through renovations, it garnered a more Gothic look. Throughout the period of Ottoman occupation in Hungary, the cathedral was used as ground to coronate kings of Hungary. It was associated so much with the Hungarian monarchy that its tower on its top garners a gold plated replica of St. Stephen's crown. <laughs> Because the food. <laughs> a short walk nearby leads us to Bratislava's most prized jewel, the Bratislava Castle. Much like everyone, Bratislava is aware that a European city without a castle isn't a city, and as such, it takes great pride in keeping its castle in top shape. The site on which the castle lay today has been fortified since humanity first found its way to Slovakia, and everyone from the prehistoric cultures that inhabited the area to the Celts and Romans built their fortifications here. Yet, the first form of the Bratislava castle took form in the 9th century under the Principality of Nitra. The first castle was made almost entirely out of wood. However, as the principality evolved into the Empire of Great Moravia, so did the wood as it became replaced with stone. Much of the stones used in the construction of the castle came from the ones used by the Romans in the construction of their fort. Over the next centuries, it served as a base to repel Bohemian and German attacks, and at several points, it was even the royal residence of several Hungarian kings. After the Battle of Mohac and the fall of Hungary, the castle was once more remodeled into a more renaissance look and became the home of the crown of Saint Stephen, Hungary's first king. From the hill where the castle is situated, you can also look onwards to the rest of the city, the Danube and much of its kami blocks that have undergone renovation efforts. Across the Danube, you can also notice the bridge of the Slovak National Uprising, also colloquially known as the UFO Bridge. 
The bridge received that name due to the restaurant on top of it, which is, well, in the shape of a UFO. Last but not least, we have the Church of St. Elizabeth, also known as the Blue Church. The church sticks out as a sore thumb, as it is built in the Hungarian secessionist style, which is definitely one of my favorites. The blue color radiates throughout the neighborhood and gives life to it. It was built in the early 20th century, before the collapse of Austria-Hungary thus its unique character and contrast with the rest of the city. And yeah, that would be Bratislava, a capital of a small central European country that despite its size still has tons to offer. Although many use it as a weekend trip from far more famous European destinations, Bratislava still has quite the unique character and charm by the tons. Despite what some Hungarian nationalists might say, its vibrant and long history radiates from every corner of the city, as every building in the capital has a unique story to tell. I implore you to go give Slovakia a shot, as you might be quite pleasantly surprised with what you get. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did and want me to do more of Slovakia, click that like and subscribe button and if you really enjoyed it, become a member of like these wonderful people or go and check out theironicshop.com for some amazing merch like my board game. My name is Janos and you've watched Living Ironically in Europe. Hey, hey, why are you leaving?